And today we'll be discussing the Mayans. They are a group of indigenous people that was once living in the Caribbean region. Um, and so today we're going to look about where exactly in the Caribbean region did they live? Why did they choose to live in this area? And what contribution did they give? What kind of empire did they build? What kind of people were they? Previously, we studied the Tainos and the Kalinagos, and we learned a lot about them. So now it's time to look into the Mayans. Now, where were the Mayans located? We know that the Mayans lived in Central America, the mainland, and they chiefly occupied the Yucanda Peninsula. Unlike the Taino and the Kalinagos, they built their settlements inland. Now, in the, the Tainos and the Kalinagos built their settlement near the coast. However, the Mayans built their settlements inland in Central America. For your homework and down below, comment for me um, if there's a comment bar down below when I send you this video. Or uh, just um, in your books, you're going to research and let me know what are the different countries that we will find in the Central America. Now, why did they choose to live in land? We know that the Kalinagos and the Tainos live to live, chose to live on the, the coastline because they wanted to be near the water for domestic purpose. But why did the Mayan group of people choose to live inland? And the first reason is because they wanted a lot of land space to build their temples. The Mayans are, are known for temples and they are known for um, pyramids and they are known for their roads and they're also known for their plazas and as a as a result of that, they needed to be inland where they had easy access to limestone for building. They could easily access limestone for building. There was an also an extensive trading route in the interior. The different tribes that lived in the interior, they traded with each other. And the Mayans are a group of people whose economy was based on trading, so it was good for them to be inland. They also did a lot more farming than the Tainos and the Kalinagas would have done. And they didn't only do subsistence farming, but they did surplus farming, where they didn't only farm for themselves and their family, but they farm for to trade. And so they needed a lot of land space in order to farm the different crops that they farm. And also rivers were located inland, so they were still near to water bodies. Even though they weren't near to the coastline, they were still near to rivers so that they could be used for all the domestic purpose that they needed for. So now we want to look at the political organization of the, of the Mayans. We're jumping straight into it. Um, the political organization of the three groups of Mayan, uh, sorry, of the three groups, which were the Kalinagas and the Tainos, the Mayans were the most advanced. They are said to be the most civilized group among them. They built a vast empires and had independent city-states, um, such as they had a fairly elaborate, rigid system of government. Now, unlike the Kalinagas and the Tainos that only had their chief, who was the Obutu for the Kalinagas and Tell me the Kesik for the Tainos, the Mayans had a more elaborate and in-depth structure. They they were an empire, but those empires are different cities and different states and different villages. And each city, state, and village and its leader and government. And as a such, they were they were more advanced and rigid in their rules and government. Each city state had its own ruler. Now, this was an editary position. It was passed on from father to son only. His position, his power was wide. He was also responsible, also was mostly an absolute ruler, excuse me. He had the final say in all matters. He had various civil, military, and religious duties that he must perform. So each city state had a ruler and each ruler was given his position by birth. It was passed on from his father to him. And he was he had in charge of the civil matters, the religious matters, and the military matters. He designated all domestic, he, sorry, he designed 
all domestic policies and foreign affairs. So whatever whatever rules and order that was going to be dealt with domestically, the local leader of the city state will deal with deal with that issue and he will also deal with any exchange of trade or war that has to do with any foreign countries. Remember that we are dealing with a large area when compared to the Caribbean region occupied to by the Tainos and Kalinagos. Belize alone is twice the size of Jamaica. So just from here alone, we know one country that was in Central America, Belize. So the Mayans lived, us, lived in Belize. Now, Belize is twice the size of Jamaica. Now, that is one of the reasons why they had so many city-states, and that is why they, they, they needed to have different leaders for different city-states, because the area that they lived in, the Mayans lived in, was wide. It was big. The states were divided into villages, and they were ruled by Batas. No, the Batabs are now leaders. So first and foremost, you have the city-state leaders, and now you have the village leader. So let us recap. The Mayan is an empire. That empire does not have one ruler that rules all of them. Instead, the these empires, individual cities, those individual city states have their leaders, and these individual city states now they have villages that are ruled by Batas. Right now, the Batas, Batabs, sorry, they were all chosen from the noble class. So this post was also editorial. They were to see it that the law and policies were enforced. So all the laws and the policies that was made by the leader of the city state was enforced by the leader of the villages. He gained his position from the royal or the noble class of people. However, he, he, he wasn't born into it, he was chosen, but he had to be born into a specific family for him to be chosen for this possession, position. Sorry. Because the Mayans were constantly engaging in defending their from neighboring territories, there was a war chief around Nokans. And Nokans were also an important part of the, the government. They were, however, elected for three years. During this term of office, they were not allowed to drink any strong gin. They were responsible for providing training to soldiers. Now, here we are learning of another leader. So the first leader is the leader of the city state. Then we have the leader of the village. Then we have the chief who was in charge of training the soldiers. And he was in charge of military problem, um, problems and military issues. So we have three different sets of leaders who answered to each other and who had different duties and different responsibilities. However, the difference between the war chief and the two chiefs we said before is that the war chief, he was elected. People had to vote for him to become. He wasn't born into it. It was not editory. editory. It wasn't passed on from generation to generation. He had to work hard for it and prove to be loyal and prove to be brave enough to become the war chief. So, before we move on to the social structure, let us recap the political structure. First and foremost, we must realize that their political structure was diverse and it was complex because they, it was a large empire. So, the one thing we must know when we're thinking about the political structure of the mines that they are a large empire and that their empire is divided into city state. Each city state as a ruler, he gained his position just passed on from his father, and he was in charge for civil, military, and um, domestic, as well as war and religious principles. Now, each city state was further divided into villages, and each village had its own leader, and those leaders ensure that whatever rules and order that was created is stick to and followed. He also inherited his position. Aside from those two, we have the chief of war or the war chief. He did not inherit his position. However, he was elected into his position and 
he could not drink anything during that time and he had to ensure that the soldiers were trained and ready for war to defend them their country their tribe their nation their city their village against militaries. moving on we have social organization the society was also organized along a rigid class line. What this means is that they have different classes. Just as though in today's society, we have the upper class, the middle class, the working class, the poor class, and the lower class we have. In the Mayan society, they had a rigid society. You have those at the top coming all the way down. Um, at the top of this rigid society, you'll find the royal family, the nobles. So the persons who are chiefs and nobles and are considered a royal, You'll also find the scribes, which were the persons who would write all the records, and the priests. So the first class at the top of the pyramid is the royal class, the nobles, the scribes, and the royal families, their leaders, the chiefs, and their families. Next, we'll find the merchants, right? Now, the merchants are the persons who traded. So the trade men, the persons who traded from country to country, city to city, village to villages, they were next. Then we have the farmers and the craftsmen, the persons who actually did the farming and grew the crops and the persons who would build whatever um, that we, they needed to be built. And then finally you had slaves. So it was a pyramid with the slaves at the bottom, then the farmers and the craftsmen, the merchants, then the royal families, the nobles, the priests. That is what their social organization was. It was very um, rigid and stratified. The Mayan society was a complex one. They were very intelligent and therefore the society accommodated their privileged, their privileged people in the noble class. So the educated people, the intelligent people, they were in the, the noble class. Usually though, the astronomers and astrologers and mathematicians were from the priesthood. So we know that the priest is a part of the noble and the first class, and to the priests that will become the astrologers, astronomers, and the mathematicians. So now we're going to know that we know what the social class looks like, and let us recap. It's a pyramid, and that's what the pyramid we have the royal families, we have the nobles, we have the scribes, and we have the priests. And the educated people, such as the mathematicians, the astronomers, and the astrologers. Right below them, we'll have our merchants, the person who would trade. Then we have our skill men, which were the craftsmen and the farmers. And below, and then below that, we'll have our slaves. Now, let's move on to the different occupations that one would possess or one would have when in the Mayan society. They were engineers, they were architects, they were preachers. Priests, sorry, they were teachers, mathematicians, and astronomers. So, do you see how educated and well developed this society is in comparison to the Tainos and the Kalinagas? There were scribes, there were, there were traders, there were farmers, there were miners, there were those who worked in factory industry, there were those who worked as artisans and as craftsmen. Here you will see stratification so at the extreme top you know is the ruler then you have the nobles then you have the merchants then you have the farmers and then and at the bottom you have the slaves so this is a picture of the and the stratification of the mayan society and how they this is the pyramid that i'm looking at now let us move on into their religion. These set of people, just like the Tainas and the Kalinagos, were very religious. They, they also was polytheistic. And if you remember, polytheistic means that they believed there was one God. They had two, had a number of mythical, they too had a number of myths to explain the mystery of life, including earth and the creation. Just as the Kalinagos and the had myths, so the, the Mayans and they believe in the forces of good and evil. They believe in life after death, heaven and hell, and the underworld. They believe that there there is punishment in the afterlife for those who live a evil life. They believe it there is reward in the afterlife for those who live a good life. They believe in connecting to their priests. 
one on one's death today. So if you're going to die, you can test your priests all your sins. They believe in offering human sacrifices to the gods, especially virgin girls. This is graphic, but this is what they believe. They believe in you to communicate with your God. If you remember, the only one who believe in that, but the Kalina, you could communicate with your God. The Mayans also believe in says to communicate with your God. Having birthed festivals and celebration honor the God. So once they celebrated their birthday and festivals honoring their gods, they believe keeping the gods happy um was okay. So the the God makes sacrifices to this whatever the gods wanted they could give them. So these are what the more gods decide according to now the first god that you'll be seeing right here on my left your right is the god of rain then we have the sun the god of maize the god of death and, god, and the god of death so these were the different gods that they have they believe in a god of the rain a god of the sun a god of the maize which is the corn a god of um death and a goddess of it so they want to be in god of death now, now that we're moving on on religion let's also talk about their gender gender religions what's their specific roles that women have to do and specific roles that men have to do in almost all societies especially asian society that was true in the mayan society women played a subservient role that means they were underneath the men they weren't rulers leaders they were underneath the men mayan women were not allowed to drink at functions they were supposed to take their drunken husband home so they had to sober for their husbands they could not hold public positions and their main function was childbearing and be housekeepers in fact my men could divorce his wife if she did not bear in any children so you see how they treat their women back in those days There were also in specific roles. They worked to pay the tribe taxes. So the women were to pay the taxes of the men. They did weaving and pottery were and they they did this very good. All of the women did. They were most recre they did more recreational activities. And they could not participate in the one that the men did. For example, there were they were the only one dance there was only one dance in which men and women were allowed to dance together all other dance was done by men together the men also participated in bow and arrow contests so most of the active women just had to sit and observe um but they could dance with their husband and dance or with men what were the main activities that they to produce this to provide their base. No, we know that they had a lot of skills, lots of activities. What was your main activities? Just so if we're talking about Jamaica, our main activities was in agriculture. The main activity for them was trading for hunting. So even though they had a lot of different activities, their main activity was trading for hunting. Trading. They traded within the mainland, they traded by land and sea. There was a day set aside for market days, and there was established market centers. So there were big market centers. Just as always, if you think about Jamaica, downtown Kingston, the market center, you see them have, um, downtown market, they have a coronation market. They had a big market center um, in the Mayan society, and they had specific days. Just as nowadays, Fridays and Saturdays is known as a market in Jamaica, they would have had their market days, but those are the days at the Farmer would come out and they would buy. The islands had the lowlands did not. So in, in the islands, the, the lands that are on hills and mountains and the lowlands and valleys, they had that each other didn't have to so trade with each other. They, they used the rivers and the long coastline as sea route to get from another city. Where who could carry a large 
value my voice in the large canoe that they build instead of a limited amount on their areas along long distance. So they, they will travel all of the sea to sell things and they chose this route because it was easy for them to travel along the sea because they could carry a lot of things to a lot of okay location and they did this and the canoe because they built tools. Just like the time you know the Nagas built canoes, the Mayans also built canoes. They also traded in flint and other things and it was on great demand because great purpose in certain areas and it was plentiful. Now other metal uh, splint was um stones that they they, they traded feathers because as you know they they they, they are writing style they, they tried to trade feathers and they all they all already know that they traded with the people of the greater Antony. So this is neutral, traded with the people of the Antony. Um, and the person of the greater Antony was the Tainos. The Tainos and the Mayans traded together. The, the merchants and traders were known as the Romans. They were all, they were often used as spies. Yes, they were also used and suspected to be spies information on other cities where they went to trade and sell or also sign. Now, we know that there were farmers. They had to slash and burn tracing raising farm field farm statement. They do a wide variety of apps that include vegetables, vegetables and maize, which we know is corn, which was their favorite. And they also had squash and pumpkin and cocoa. And they had um, cassava, cotton, papaya, and sweet potatoes. These were some of the things they farmed. And in addition to farming, there were others. The wild forest of Central America came in last year. natural habit, were natural habits of many animals and had a number of bears, birds, and jaguars, and, and hutu, and they would all these things for beetles. They also did animal husbandry. They reared a wide variety of animals in order to provide meat for their families and for sale in the market. Now, they, some of these animals were the um, rabbits. Now, in addition to hunting animals, they are animals that they would keep and go and wear so that they can have for them and their family. They also did mining. This was a very important to the Mayan society and politics. They were a large, they were a large extent of livestock to be found in Central America. Using their slave labor, they did large blocks of limes for the construction of city temples and the pyramids. I said before to you earlier, they had city grand cities and temples. In order to do this, they were and they had to mine them up. So they need places that were that very active in coming or to demand for the construction purpose. How did they manage the title of this adaptive land? Now, among the civilization, the Mayans are the most advanced. They are more developed and they are intellectual. The reason that they were called that is because of their intent and their technology. So, as relates to technology, use a light and to construct great magnificent. And they had the road at Jesus. Arch, they had massive temple, they had staircases, they had pyramids constructed from stones, large public buildings made of limestone and mortar. There are a lot of things that depicted the history. The stone steel things that they wrote on to the story. So their technology was in was with their uh, architecture and their engineering was beautiful.
beautiful and then they have there was they have uh, their number system they use, uh, they use it to build their clean they practice writing known as hierographics uh, they practice the writing known as hierographics and the book to build up tree marks they create a calendar um, that was on the year and they also had a year as practice astronomy plants and they need them to determine what was the right of when to get married when to start they were very advanced to technology in the calendar their engineering architecture these people were very advanced for their time they were developed for their time and comparing the calendars they were very intellectual, very aware, very mathematical, and they advanced. They created so something that makes them about time. The fact that they had a meeting, they had and burn, and they had um their methods. They had a currency. They so we monitored to pay for coins. They are money that copper copper means was very expensive, it was very valuable, and they would use copper to trade. They use an irrigation system, so they had a way to get water from the rivers to their houses, to their homes, to their farms, to their villages, to their towns, without literally to carry the water on their head. They had a system. They dams and wells to store the water supplies and they knew the art of dyeing they know how to dye fabric and as you know how to use dyeing paint this, this is very important the rest of society they would just carry water and that water that's ideally put to the coast but moderately inland is the water and they are dammed well and that brings us to the end for today. Um, I believe it's the month. I hope that you've learned and, and there will be questions coming out of this city. And I hope that you'll listen. You'll take notes if necessary for the exam. And I hope that you were able to understand what was said. And let's just read the minds. And in America, the Mayans they lived in countries like Brazil. The Mayans, sorry, believe the Mayans they were advanced in technology. They were advanced in math. They had calendars. They had a written. They had a certified society. In terms of a very certified society, the Mayans also had a really strict political. That were governed by a gifted leader and the purpose. And the chiefs of the family were three months to get a separation of state. They were never a united um, empire. They had several different states. They had every territory of the and they had a legacy. They were so obsolete men. And I, I wish you all. I'm going to